how would you, you help you with that design? How would you help with that design? You first, first, first. How would you help with Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here. It's time once again to take a break from debunking things and just talk a bit about science. There are lots of animals that people think are dinosaurs, but that aren't. This even includes modern animals, and today I'm going to talk about a group of extant animals that is probably more often mistaken for a dinosaur than any other. Crocodilians. That is, crocodiles, alligators, caimans, gharials, and the false gharials. Alligators are dinosaurs, Dwight. You know that, right? It's complicated. You know, Dwight, you're right. It actually is a little complicated. Crocodilians are the oldest relatives to dinosaurs that are still alive, but that aren't dinosaurs. Of course, birds are in fact dinosaurs, and together they make up the surviving archosaurs. However, the split between dinosaurs and crocodilians probably occurred in the earliest Triassic, approximately 250 million years ago. This is the split between Pseudosuchia and Avimetatarsalia. Avimetatarsalia includes dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and other forms such as Scleromachlis and the various dinosauromorphs such as Lagosuchus. Pseudosuchia includes crocodiles as well as Aetosaurs, Rhodosuchians, Thalatosuchians, Sphenosuchians, and others. Today, diversity in Pseudosuchians is rather sparse. There are only two species of alligator, 14 species of crocodile, five species of caiman, and but a single species each of gharial and false gharial. In the past, however, all these groups were much more diverse and widespread. In fact, both alligator and crocodile fossils have been found in end Cretaceous deposits of Montana. At that time, crocodilians seemed to have been everywhere except beyond the Arctic and Antarctic circles. So what makes a crocodile not a dinosaur? Well, let's go to the difference between Pseudosuchia and Avimetatarsalia. While there are a number of differences, the key one is the ankles. Pseudosuchians have what's called a crocodile normal ankle. On the other hand, dinosaurs, like all Avimetatarsalians, have a crocodile reverse ankle. In a crocodile normal ankle, the astragalus has a knob that fits into a socket on the calcaneum. This allows the ankle to rotate much like a human ankle, that is perpendicular to the sagittal plane. This allows for significant flexibility of the foot, and is why crocodilians can splay their legs out like lizards, but also use a high walk in which they carry their legs more or less under the body. Avimetatarsalians, on the other hand, have a crocodile reverse ankle, and in this arrangement the astragalus and the calcaneum do not have a ball and socket joint. Rather, they only move relative to the bones proximal and distal to them. This locks the ankle into only one plane of motion, that is, the sagittal plane. While this arrangement allows for much less flexibility, it is also much more efficient for overland locomotion. This is one possible reason why dinosaurs became the dominant land animals after the end of the Triassic. But this is not to say that there were not plenty of Pseudosuchians running around during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. There were lots. Some of the cool ones include Sphenosuchians. They appeared in the Triassic and lasted until at least the Middle Jurassic. They were long-limbed terrestrial pursuit predators of primarily small prey. Perhaps most interestingly, they may be ancestral to modern crocodilians. If this is true, then modern forms are actually highly modified Sphenosuchians. Thalatosuchians were marine predators living from the early Jurassic to the early Cretaceous. They were crocodilomorphs, which makes them fairly close to actual crocodilians. Some of them may even have had fish or mosasaur-like tails to repel them through the water. Poposauroids were very dinosaur-like Pseudosuchians. They were primarily bipedal, and they even had open acetabula, except they were even open at the bottom, unlike in dinosaurs. If not for their ankle, they might have been mistaken for a strange group of Triassic dinosaurs. Getting into crocodilians after the end of the age of the dinosaurs, we have the absolutely gigantic caiman species, Purusaurus. This monster lived in the early Amazon basin and was big enough to swallow a human whole. It could potentially have been as long as 12 and a half meters, or 40 feet long. Then we have Planocraniids, a family of crocodilians that were adapted to terrestrial pursuit predation, like their Sphenosuchian forerunners. But these guys were the size of a mountain lion and ran on hoof-like claws. They also had teeth more like a Tyrannosaurus than a crocodile, being knife-like rather than conical. These beasts were terrors for mammals in Europe, China, and perhaps North America during the Eocene stage of the Paleogene period. So, we have a few other ways to know that crocodilians aren't dinosaurs. One is digicount, one is the hips. Crocodilians have a closed acetabulum like all non-dinosaurs. Also, the femoral head is not distinctly offset from the shaft of the femur, like in a dinosaur. Also, they do not have reduced digits 4 and 5 on the forelimbs like dinosaurs. And they only have three sacral vertebrae, 
but dinosaurs all have more than three. Another difference is that dinosaur hind limbs have reduced digits, such that only digits 2, 3, and 4 were really weight-bearing, and often only those toes had claws, although that was not the case for theropods. While this isn't strictly a difference, dinosaurs had a strong tendency to bipedality. In fact, the quadrupedal dinosaurs were descended from biped ancestors, even the giant sauropods. While there have been bipedal pseudosuchians, this is not the basal condition. Pseudosuchians, including crocodilians, have always had a stronger tendency to walking on all four limbs. Well, I think that's all for today. Please remember to like and share this video, it really helps a lot. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that, and don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to be notified anytime there's more Dapper Dino content. See you next time, I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thanks for watching, but before you go, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons, especially my $20 patrons, Ben Tovind, Ian Chen, Bob Knob, The Evil Scotsman, Henry Hutanen, Chris Love, and Res Instance. My team over at Patreon are helping me make these videos, and I have tiers starting as low as a dollar and going all the way up to $100. So if you'd like to help out the Dapper Dino channel and help make these videos better and possibly even more frequent, then why don't you head over there and check it out? If a recurring donation isn't right for you, but you'd still like to help out, I have a link to my Amazon wishlist in the description. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. <laughs> How would you tell people that you first first first? How would you tell them? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.